to the first Sunday of Christmas and the last Sunday of 2020. Uh, there are certainly several reasons to celebrate, to celebrate there, right? So um, it is my pleasure to be here this morning to welcome you, whether you are viewing online, uh, maybe our live webcast or looking at us later on in the day or even later in the week, um, or for those of you that have joined me here in the sanctuary. As we begin our time of worship here at Ann Street United Methodist Church, let's just take a moment and listen to the prelude to put our minds and hearts in a prayerful spirit. I'm sure Teresa and I are both missing the opportunity to sing the descant um, to that particular hymn. And so the announcements um, that I'm about to share with you have their feet um, in both years, um, some in 2020 and then transitioning into 2021. Um, I first want to take an opportunity to tell you that we are rejoicing with Rachel Wyman Dawson and the family um, because they are welcoming a new baby in February, a new baby for them and a new baby for us too. Um, Rachel, however, um, looking forward to uh, new motherhood um, and also because she has many opportunities now um, in her practice as physical therapist will be unable to continue her role as communication specialist for our church. So we completely understand that um, she has been, she has blessed us with her many gifts 
um, in the time that she uh, has been in this role, and we will be looking for someone to fill um, that spot. So uh, thank you, Rachel, for everything you've done, um, and we give you all of our best. We'll be looking forward to the birth of that new baby. Um, the um, SP Staff Pastor Parish Relations Committee, that's a mouthful, um, is looking uh, to fill that position, as I mentioned. Um, it will be a part-time communication specialist role um, that will tell the community and the world what God is doing through our church. Um, request, you can request uh, the job description at jobs at anstreetumc.org, um, or you can call the church office. Um, and then set, you can, the resume should be sent in to jobs at anstreetchurchumc.org. Everybody got that? Yes. By uh, 4.30 on January 6th so that we can fill this important position quickly. Um, I have two uh, special uh, prayer opportunities uh, for you as well. Uh, we invite you to come for a time of praying for the new year. Um, this Wednesday, December 30th, beginning at 6 o'clock right here in our sanctuary. This event will also be live streamed. Um, it is a special event where we will begin with prayers lifted by our church leaders and members and continue with prayers from anyone who feels moved by the spirit. Um, this will be followed by a time for personal and silent prayer. So we hope that many of you will be able to, to be here for this very important transitional prayer time. Your United Methodist men also offer weekly prayer meetings. They're held on Tuesdays at nine o'clock on the third floor of the year building, and they will be meeting this Tuesday. So um, the, the group looks forward to having uh, the men join uh, them for an hour of fellowship. And by fellowship, they mean Sue Way's baking goodies. So for those of you that have, that have been there before, delicious. For those of you that haven't, that's your bribe. Uh, come and join this group, um, and there will be obviously uh, prayer blessings for your family and for your friends as well. Um, I now have an important message for the United Methodist women who are secret sisters, because I need you to mark your calendars. So uh, the long-awaited secret sister reveal is coming up. Believe it or not, we've come to the end of our year. So on Sunday, January 17th at 2 o'clock, your secret sister will be revealed. Now, this year's celebration required us to be even more creative than we have been in the past. So watch your email for uh, information from the coordinator, this uh, sister secret coordinator, Mary Sue Berry, which will be coming in uh, just a few days. Are there other announcements that uh, I am not aware of that someone would like to offer? Oh, would, would you please take the points at us uh, when you go today? So this is a great way to uh, give encouragement to someone else or to just give yourself some joy. Um, so please stop and take a point set on your way out today. I will say the opening prayer on your behalf. Light of the world, shine in our lives this day. As we gather to worship you this day, give us the eyes of Simeon and the faith of Anna that we may see the promise of our salvation. As we come before you with hope and expectation, give us the spirit of your son, that we too may grow in strength and increase in wisdom. In your holy name, we all pray, amen. Uh, this now is the time for passing the peace. So if you'd stand or twist or whatever you're gonna do, uh, where you are, you can wave hug, virtual hugs, whatever, um, to let other people know how much you care about them this morning. Peace. peace. Music from Teresa Miller.
the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Thank you, Teresa. The children's message this morning will be brought to us by Julia via video. Hey guys, good morning. Merry Christmas. As you guys can see, I'm back with my crab pot tree and I'm at my new house. Some of you may be wondering why I still have my tree up, but we are actually now in the season of Christmas and we will be celebrating Christmas the next 12 days. I hope a lot of you got gifts this weekend that Santa came to visit your house. I have this super cool gift. We're going to open it together and see what it is. It is a cross. Can you guys see that? Now, the reason why I have the cross in a gift box is because the birth of our Savior Jesus is the best gift we could ever get. And it is what we are celebrating this time of year. So, Jesus born. We celebrated on Thursday. Many of you probably went to or watched church. And maybe if you're like me, you're thinking, what happened next? Well, Jesus was Jewish and the Jewish custom was to take him to the temple or kind of like how we have church now and have him be blessed. So Mary and Joseph took Jesus to the temple and they saw a man named Simeon. And Simeon said, Oh my goodness, this is the Savior, and was really excited to see Jesus because God had told him that he would not pass away until he met the Savior. And Simeon had grown old and was waiting for the day. Another woman named Anna, who spent all her time at the temple praying, also recognized Jesus as the Messiah. Now, this is a really cool moment in the Bible because it's the first time someone recognizes Jesus as the Messiah. Now, maybe you're thinking Mary and Joseph recognized him as the Messiah. Now, they were told he was the Messiah, but they did not quite recognize or fully believe that that's who he was yet. And Simeon and Anna are the first people in the Bible to recognize Jesus as the Savior. So while we celebrate Jesus' birth at this time at Christmas, we get presents, yes, and that is really super fun to have Santa come visit us and spend with our time, time with our family, maybe in person or on video calls this year. The greatest gift we could ever get is our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And today we are recognizing that he is the Christ. Will you guys join me in prayer? You can repeat after me. Dear God, Thank you for Jesus. We celebrate his birth and we recognize that he is the Messiah. Amen. Okay, guys, have a great week. I always feel so much better after that. You know? <laughs> it's wonderful. Uh, our Old Testament uh, scripture reading is Psalm 148. The title of this beautiful song is called Praise for God's Universal Glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. 
He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Grace and peace. It's good to be together. And isn't that a, a rich and beautiful psalm of praise for us this morning? And as uh, Julia spoke about the story of Simeon and Anna, hear now the reading from Luke 2, 22 through 40. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they, that is Mary and Joseph, brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of two turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. The Holy Spirit rested on him, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about the child. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna the daughter of Phanuel, daughter of, Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after their marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and praying night and day. And that moment came, she came and began to praise God and speak about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. May God add a blessing to the reading of the word. Amen. Who does not love to see a new baby? Right? Haven't we had fun even in church here when... Uh, the newest uh, baby among us, uh, Sam, Samuel Ramsey, and Sam and Meredith have been with us, and, and uh, we love seeing him. He's been animated by the music lately. I don't know if you've been able to hear about that, but he uh, gets up, and he hears the organ, and he starts waving his arms. You know, it's great when a coworker brings a new baby to the office for the first time. You ever had that, done that? Been, some of you have been that, that parent. Uh, uh, or maybe to the school to to meet the, uh, the the you know a teacher that's been out and comes back and brings the baby back to meet the kids, uh, or just seeing a proud parent pushing a stroller down the sidewalk. I see that all the time. Come by here at the by the office, and uh, one of the new families that's been uh, coming to our, our church when they can uh, was pushing their baby down the sidewalk, and I was we're real delighted. It gave us a good chance to visit. Or a baby especially is brought into the worship service and that moment when everyone wants to go over and see the new baby. And pretty much we preachers know that on those Sundays, you know, we're not the thing. We, you, everybody's going to go see the baby before and after the service. And they're just waiting for the preacher to get done so they can go see the baby. Well, Mary and Joseph brought their new baby into the temple. Uh, so they brought their baby to church, if you will. Uh, to present him to the Lord. Uh, they were there because the time had also come, you know, in the law of Moses, it said a woman after she'd given birth had to wait a certain number of weeks and then had to go through a purification ritual. And this was part of what they what they did and, and some still do. 
And Luke includes details like this and little things that may pass us by. We kind of think, oh, well, okay, you know, that's what they did back then, I guess. But the, he has a point. He's trying to make sure that his first readers and you today and any Jew who reads this will know that the Messiah was completely 100% certified as uh, having followed all the laws of Moses. Mary and Joseph did all the things that were they were supposed to do, and uh, everything was, was kosher, to use the term, right? But to their surprise, Mary and Joseph, it turns out they're not only there for this purification, but they're also there because the Holy Spirit has directed two ancient old prophets of the temple, two senior saints of the church, of the church if you will, to, in, to intercept them on their way in and, uh, and, and bless this holy child, Simeon and Anna. And we're even told, just like we were about what Mary and Joseph were doing, Luke goes to great lengths to explain that Simeon and Anna were both devout in every way. And, you know, they, that they were there looking for the consolation of Israel. And, and they were there praying and fasting all the time and, and all these things to, to sort of beef up the credentials. But, but we know that the biggest credential they had was what Luke makes sure to put in there. He says it multiple times that they were blessed and they were sent to intercept them, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus, by the Holy Spirit. And, and it's one of those mentions of the Holy Spirit that comes before Acts 2, and, and when, when, the, when the day of Pentecost comes. So it's really special because it's a divinely appointed encounter for Jesus and Mary and Joseph when he's just a little, a little taught. Perhaps you know some Simeons and some Annas, and I thought we'd take a moment and kind of do a little quick character study of each of them and see if we can relate to one or the other, or maybe both of them in some kind of way. Simeons and Annas, uh, in your life, in, your, in, in our church, or maybe in your church of origin, or someplace where you've been, maybe in your family, you've got a Simeon or an Anna type of person. In my home church, I, I would I wish I could have introduced you to Miss Emma Crawford. Miss Emma Crawford taught the four-year-old Sunday school class at my home church for 60 years. She taught three generations that came through. Four-year-olds who grew up and had four-year-olds who grew up and had four-year-olds. And she taught all three in some in, in the e extreme cases. She was still teaching the, there into her 90s. And uh, when she finally couldn't come anymore, even in the last days, they had extra teachers that kind of ran the class. But then they'd bring in, you know, 90-something-year-old Miss Emma Crawford, and she'd sit down and read the children a Bible story. And I'm telling you, they were transfixed. She just had that something that, that all of us were blessed by. She lived in Raleigh to be 107 years old. News Observer and WREL wrote up something, did up something about her when she was about 106. And she made for each of us, uh, her students, a hand crocheted little pillowcase every, for every one of us. And I still have mine. I, you know, there are these special saints in every congregation. Uh, and, and, and they are beloved people whom the parents of little babies are hoping to go and introduce the baby to, you know, you, you know what that's like. And they bring in the baby and it's this moment, this moment of blessing. And maybe it was, you know, it is, maybe we don't have all the, the, the whole consolation of Israel and all that kind of stuff like, 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 uh, uh, like Simeon, but, but, but there's a blessing in just having them hold the new baby and play with the new baby and welcome them and congratulate the family. You know, that's what Simeon and Anna were. Simeon goes first. Two times in the story that Luke tells, we're told that he anticipates the restoration of Israel. Uh, that's a, 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 a sort of a fancy way of saying he was very patriotic, if you will. Uh, not patriotic for Rome, patriotic for Israel. And he was one of those who was uh, set on seeing Israel 
have its own have the Messiah and have its its uh, standing in the world again before he died. And um, he is even told, and imagine this in a in a in a message from the Spirit that he will not die before he sees the Messiah. Maybe that's why he lived to be so old. It's amazing, isn't it? Imagine that. And now that he's seen the Messiah, he says he can die. He essentially says he can die a fulfilled man. We hear, he has a song uh, that we call the Canticle of Simeon, where he says, Master, you are now dismissing your servant in peace. And by that he means, you know, I can die a happy man, right? Uh, but according to your word, for my eyes have seen the salvation that you've promised in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. Already, he's thinking about the Gentiles, you and me, how he's going to, how this is going to, this Savior is going to reach beyond just the Jews. Even Simeon knew it. But when, he, when, when Jesus was a baby. And then he says, so you can depart your servant in peace. Now, he said all this while he's walked up to the baby, and some, uh, Mary and Joseph don't seem to know who this man is, but he's walked up, and forgive me, but you know he's grabbed up the baby. I don't know if they had strollers back then, but they, he's, if he didn't, then he grabbed him out of his mother's arms and held him up and said all this stuff about him. So Luke says, Mary and Joseph were quite surprised. <laughs> I think that's an understatement. I think if it was most parents, they'd be like, excuse me, you know, wait a minute. Uh, he, but the Holy Spirit has given him this. And then it gets kind of strange because, and it gets a little weird because he says all this and he sings his song. And then you can imagine him holding the baby and he then goes on to say to Mary, especially, this child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel. Ooh, that sounds, sounds like something strange, doesn't it? And it would be a sign that will be opposed by the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. Wow. You know, usually it's kind of like, oh, he's a beautiful baby, baby boy. He's going to grow up to be so big and special and you're going to be so happy. No, this was, he's going to grow up and reveal the inner thoughts of many and bring down a lot of people in Israel. <laughs> and then he looks at Mary and says, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. And then he hands the baby back. <laughs> I mean, talk about, talk about your breathtaking moments. Simeon, let, let's just say he didn't hold back. I mean, look, if you'd been waiting your whole life to see this man, and this was what your whole life was about. Well, what did he have to lose? He wasn't going to stop and just be all sweet. He was going to tell him what he came to tell him. He was going to prophesy. That's what prophets did. They told you the good and the bad, didn't they? I don't think Mary was too excited to hear about this child, right? You know, being a controversial or or how her own soul would be pierced, but. But, but, you know, knowing Mary and all she'd been through already and how she'd pondered all these things in her heart already, I think she, I think she already knew that this was going to be a special child. So we have Simeon who is, what do we do with him now? He, he, he's kind of like the guy who watches for the Messiah his whole life, finally encounters Christ not in a prince or a Roman prefect, but in a baby brought in by a humble mother and father. And I just want to ask if there's some part of us that can identify with Simeon today. And that may be a little hard because I've already talked about how kind of odd he was. But I want to in, kind of cast him in a different light. I want to say, are you a searcher? Are you a seeker? Are you someone who is still, as we all kind of have to be to some degree, trying to figure out what this whole Christmas is, this whole incarnation, this whole God coming in earth in a baby? Are you still like Simeon, 
amazed and perplexed? Have you lost the wonder that Simeon has in this moment? Have you lost the surprise uh, that Simeon shows you? Has, has, have his words, by their very raw nature, reminded you that this child is not just a sweet little baby's child, sweet little Jesus boy. He is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel. I, I'm not going to assume that just because you're in church or you, you're watching church, or even because you're a Christian, uh, that you, you feel that you understand everything. I think Christmas is still for seekers. Kind of like Epiphany, kind of like the visit of the wise men. Uh, they were seekers. And I think there's a lot of people who can relate to, to Simeon who were maybe waiting for the Messiah and then finally find the Messiah in Jesus. You know, there's some people take down all the tinsel on December 26, you know. Uh, some people are the first ones to bag up all the paper, all the wrapping paper, and bag it away and take it to the, to the trash heap. You know, and, and they, they, Christmas is done. We've done Christmas. It was fun. It's great, whatever. But deep down, they're not entirely sure what everyone's making such a fuss about. I, I just want to, I don't want those seeker and searcher people to feel guilty about that. Because Simeon was waiting and waiting and waiting. And I just think, you know, there ought to be room enough for people to have Christmas and still be a searcher and a seeker. So they could be patient with themselves. They're not Scrooges or Grinches. They, they love Christmas. They love Jesus. But be patient. Remember, the shepherds came and told Mary all these things. And what did it say? It said Mary understood everything all of a sudden. No, it said she pondered these things in her heart. You might be a Simeon. Maybe you watch. Maybe you wait. Maybe when you know, you know. But until then, you're, you're listening and you're watching. Okay, well, that's enough about Simeon. We've got to get to Anna. Anna is a bit of a counterpart to Simeon. Uh, both of them are prophetic. Both of them are aged. Both of them are pious. And both of them react to the boy Jesus entering the temple with their endorsement. And we are told that they both have been given the Spirit. They've been given this divine encounter that the Holy Spirit has kind of choreographed, you know? I mean, they hadn't even made, if Mary was there to be purified, they hadn't made it even far enough into the temple area to the place where the women weren't allowed yet because they'd gotten intercepted by these, by these uh, two prophets. But what we know about Anna is she's introduced with a number of facts which also give her impeccable credentials. She is fasting and praying at the temple all the time. She probably had a cot somewhere in the temple area, maybe, or something like that. Another thing we know about her is she lived with her husband for seven years, and then he died and left her and as a young widow. And she lived to be 84. So she had a long widow period. Now, uh, most of us, not a lot of us, if someone, uh, you know, married and the, and the, if a woman married and the husband died like really young and they only had life together for seven years, if she found love again, then she might get married to a second, to an, a, a husband having been widowed, you know, and didn't want to spend her whole life like that. Well, they didn't necessarily look, wouldn't have looked down on her for getting married necessarily back then. But it was considered extra devout back then if a woman who was widowed young didn't marry again and dedicated her life to the Lord. So, so we just have this overwhelming impression that Anna is this um, person who is so overly devout. Very, not overly, but just enormously devout. And she recognizes the child. Does she go and say anything to Mary and Joseph? Were you listening to the story? What did she say to Mary and Joseph? She didn't say anything to them that we know of. No, what she does in contrast to Simeon is she goes around and tells everyone what she's seen. She goes around and starts proclaiming. We don't know what Simeon went and told everybody after he did his proclamation, his prophecy. She 
starts running around telling everybody, overjoyed, it would appear. I just have this picture of her, and it maybe because I'm wearing a robe, it helps, but you know, me to kind of show her grabbing the hem of her of her of her robes or her garments and running around as fast as her 84-year-old feet can carry her, telling everybody that the Jesus, Jesus is here, the Messiah is here, and 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 we are to rejoice and welcome him. She's a little different from Simeon. She started praying, praising God and singing about Jesus. Luke says that she wanted to tell everyone who is looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Her whole mission is given in that phrase. His mission was to wait and live his life until he could finally see the Messiah. Her mission was to run out and tell everybody that he was here. Different. Different. And just as we have some Simeons in the sound of my voice today, I know we have some Annas too. We have some folks who know that they know that they know that they know, and that is, that is fantastic. Annas don't stay around and say a prophecy. They go out and tell everyone they see. You know, uh, Annas go out and sing, go tell it on the mountain, just as quick as they can, right? That's great. You know, the, and the Simeons and Annas the, today, the Simeons don't all have to be men, and the Annas don't all have to be women. Doesn't matter your gender or your age. Uh, doesn't matter whether you grew up in church or whether you're kind of new to this thing or whether it's come back around to you in a new way. If you're like Simeon, someone who ponders this, you might be like Simeon who ponders this Jesus and gives a lot of thought and then has a lot to express on your heart about him. Or maybe you're like Anna who can't wait to go out and run around and tell everybody. But I'll tell you one last thing that I think is important. And that is that it's all right to be a little bit of Simeon and a little bit of Anna at the same time. I think it's okay if you feel a mix of those two things. You feel some bewilderment, some healthy, holy bewilderment like Simeon might have felt. Uh, some some rest some some sense of completion like he may have felt, and maybe you are someone who will just sort of receive that and and process that and have a lot to think about. And you can also at the same time have an Anna side of you, who who runs out and tells, and runs out and shouts hallelujah. You can have both. You can be both. Christmas is big enough, God is big enough for you to have both experiences. There's room for both pondering and praising. There's room for, for both uh, truth-telling like Simeon and good news-telling like Anna. There's room for all of it in Christmas, all at once, all in you. In any event, Luke has invited us to the temple to have our own divinely appointed encounters with this, these characters today. And he's shown us this, their credentials. He's brought us here to listen to Simeon sing and to watch Anna dance. And I'll tell you this, friend. If you don't do anything else today, just listen to Simeon sing and watch Anna dance and do a little bit of both yourself. And if you don't do anything else, just sing with him and shout and dance with her and take in the whole scene. Because on this, our little Christmas, excuse me, our little Sunday nestled between Christmas and New Year's, our little, our little low Sunday, some people used to call it. I will tell you, that we don't have long. Because just as Luke ends his passage, he says, well, this little boy grew up in stature and he grew up in faith and he grew up. Just like those little babies that come into church and the workplace and the home and walk down and go down the sidewalk in a stroller 
They grow up so fast. Jesus will be followed not by kings and counselors, but by fishermen and carpenters. His endorsements will not come from the priests and the scholars, but from the old patient prophets like Simeon and, and, and Anna. And as Simeon said, he will be the falling and rising of many. And I guess I leave you with this. Jesus himself will fall and rise. Jesus himself will fall in death and rise in new life for us. Falling and rising so that we might have abundant life and life eternal. Falling and rising for us so that we might be like Simeon and Anna. Falling and rising for us and for the whole world. And it'll come too soon. Amen and amen. Well, you Simeons and you Annas, what do you pray about today? We pray for uh, the many people on our prayer list. We're continuing to remember uh, the Herring family as uh, Diana was laid to rest uh, in a beautiful private ceremony uh, last week. And we know that this Christmas, like for that family and for many others, is uh, like all Christmases are at some point the first Christmas after, you know, after someone's died, after someone's uh, gotten sick or moved away or something's happened. And so remember all the people for whom this was the first Christmas after uh, this, this day. Let's remember them because they're, 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 they're feeling that right now. Thank you, John, for bringing these up. Uh, we're going to pray for... Um, uh, continue to pray for those on our prayer list. Uh, thank you. Those who are in um, assisted uh, care facilities, um, Anita and uh, Hardesty, uh, the Harkers, uh, Sally Herring, um, the uh, Jean Chapel, uh, and uh, pray for all of these, and Patty Springle. Uh, we are uh, praying for Sam Stainback, Kelly's son, and uh, continuing to lift him up too. Uh, there may be others here. Let's see. We have some from online. Uh, the family of Helen Lister uh, is lifted up for prayer. Um, Kale and Ken and Gail Winley's daughter, Laura, will have surgery tomorrow. So um, Ken and Gail Winley's daughter, uh, Laura, having surgery. Um, Lee McClung will finish his chemo soon, which is a prayer and a good news. Uh, Turner and Beverly Pigford are celebrating their wedding anniversary on December 31st. And, uh, you know, they are, they are young and vivacious people. And uh, so I, I wouldn't, you'd, you'd be amazed that it was their 56th wedding anniversary. They must have gotten married young or something. I don't know. So congratulations, Turner and Beverly. We love you, and uh, we are praying for you, um, especially for Beverly um, uh, uh, Pigford. Um, she has had uh, 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 several uh, needs and is, uh, and is ill 
and there's uh, really only one treatment, uh, the kind of chemo treatment she's getting now that's uh, possible. So uh, for the Pigfords, as they come upon this special anniversary, we pray for you. Uh, Beth McCreary wants to thank everyone for prayers for her mother. Uh, who is doing uh, well, and uh, and we are very thankful uh, about that too. I'm sure I'm missing others. Uh, how uh, how else might we pray uh, today? Um, uh, any others from the congregation? For Joyce Fulford, yes, that's right. Joyce Fulford is still recovering from her uh, uh, fall, right? And so um, she is. Uh, she's at Crystal Bluffs, if I under, if I remember right. So Joyce Fulford uh, had to had to spend Christmas in recovery uh, this time, and we we know that we pray for her. Joe Mathis's father. Okay, so Joe Mathis, Joe and Brian, uh, Joe, we pray for your father who has COVID. Uh, so uh, Joe, will please keep us informed and let us know how he gets along. Lisa Mackey lifted up for prayer. And this is Joe. Oh, Joe Mathis. Okay, so read me back, Joe's your fa her father. Yeah. Yeah. For Joe's aunt, who is an ICU. And prayers for William Marshburn. Thank you, Joe. A lot on your heart today. Thank you. We want to pray with you. I'm grateful for those watching and sharing those prayer concerns. Okay. Well, let's do. Let's go to God together on their behalf and on behalf of Simeon and Anna and all those Simeons and Annas uh, among us. Let us go together in prayer. <laughs> Mighty and merciful Father, we praise you this day that we have encountered the baby Jesus in the temple. Here at the temple of Ann Street United Methodist Church, in the historical memorable record of Luke's gospel, we have taken our journey, our imaginative journey, to meet Simeon and Anna and pictured them in our minds. Thank you, O oh God for giving us this gospel word that we might uh, go there with you, <laughs> that by your Holy Spirit we might be transported to meet these unusual colorful characters and to be delighted with them and to be gripped with them. We thank you for the honesty of Simeon who foresaw so much that we know would come to pass regarding Jesus. And one who had waited so patiently, and we pray today for all who are patiently waiting, who celebrate Christmas, who love Jesus, but still feel there's a sense of waiting for them, waiting for the consummation, the consolation of Israel. And we thank you for taking us to meet Anna and for letting us dance with her and shout with her and celebrate with her the joy that she has met the Christ child. We praise you for Christmas, for the birth of Jesus. We praise you that not only do we have Christmas Eve to celebrate, but this Christmas Day, Christmas Sunday, and this coming uh, Wednesday that we have to gather again in prayer with you. And then we have the new epiphany coming shortly in the new year. Jesus will be baptized at the River Jordan and will be off and running. And then Lent will come and begin so soon, as Simeon reminds us. 
So Lord, help us, help us savor the Christmas joy and not pack it all away too soon. Help us um, linger in Bethlehem and at the temple and back home in Nazareth. And let us remember that Jesus was a child just like we have been children. Oh Lord, we, we bring before Jesus all of these needs and prayers and persons we have lifted up, and so many more, more than we could begin to list completely. We thank you that we have a caring church that's praying for them. And we hope and they, that they will know and feel wherever they are, here or online, or even if they don't see this, Lord, we hope they will know and feel our prayers wherever they are. Oh God, we thank you for this moment of, of pause in our busy week, in our holiday schedules. This moment when we can rejoice with Anna and ponder with Simeon and go forth to be your disciples. Those same disciples who pray as you taught. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. During this Christmas season, we celebrate the greatest gift, um, and that is uh, the birth of Christ. We are reminded um, of his birth and all of the, the things that he brought to us that continue down through the ages, that continue into the ministries that Ann Street United Methodist Church uh, so vibrantly supports. We are the hands and the feet of Jesus here. These vibrant ministries uh, can thrive only uh, through your support. And so we are, we'll take a moment to uh, consider um, the giving of tithes and offerings. You can certainly do so in person by dropping your gift off in the, the plate as you leave or as you have entered today. Um, you can do so online by going to annstreetumc.org slash give, um, or you can certainly mail it in to the church office. Now I will offer uh, a prayer of dedication for our tithes and offerings and for all of our good works. Gracious God, thank you for the gifts of Christmas and bless us throughout the year. As we offer you our offering in gratitude and praise, we dedicate our labor, our industry, and our very lives to the building of your community, of your kingdom, excuse me. May our gifts go forth to a world in need as signs of your redemption and your hope. May we shine with your glory that others may discover your saving love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, Teresa now will provide us with a great gift as well in the music of Sending Forth.
to God. I would venture to say you are in Anna with your singing aloud forth uh, about the joy of Christmas. Thank you so much, Teresa. God bless you. And God bless us as we go forth now. Please don't forget, come and take a poinsettia. They need some, some love and care in your home now. So please take uh, one or two or three. Uh, take them to friends and family and, ones that, and loved ones uh, or ones that you feel may uh, benefit from them now. Uh, they, uh, that is, they, they are for the taking. As we go forth from this place, we give God thanks that we have had an opportunity to be in the temple a little while with Mary and Joseph and Jesus and to see what great thing God has done among them. And now as you go forth, Go forth in the knowledge that God has come among us in Jesus, and that what Simeon and Anna has said is true for us all, that there is a Savior who means the consolation of Israel and will be the outreach to the Gentiles and to all the world. Praise be his name forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>